the consequences of missing the next season. Let's say that together. The consequences of missing the next season. Now, without me even going into it, it's mostly I gave you a little preface of it on Sunday. How many people have missed certain seasons or missed certain opportunities in your life that you regret that you missed? Is there anybody here tonight you missed something, you, you, you didn't move fast enough or you didn't obey the voice of God or, or what have you? And that's what we want to talk about tonight. If I was to put tonight's topic into one word, it would be the word mutability. I want you to say that tonight. Mutability. Say that. Mutability. Okay, one more time. It's mutability. Mutability. Okay, and that, is, that word means uh, constant to change, able to move, mutability. And there's another word that go, that's, goes along with that, that is the opposite of that, and it's immutability. It means something that doesn't move. God is immutable. All right, so I wish I had somebody to teach you over He's constant. That's right. He's the move. He is the unmoved mover. All right. Like that. Meaning that God is everywhere at the same time, so He doesn't have to move. We don't have to send God to the hospital because he's already there. All right. Oh, I wish I had some. Yeah. Many times we send God places thinking that we're doing something when we say, Lord, go down to the hospital. He's like, I'm already there. Why don't you meet me there? All right. And, and, you know, we send God to the hospital on Sundays while we go to the corral. Come on now. I wish I had somebody. God is immutable. He is the unmoved mover. He's always in place, but he's able to move things all around him. He's able to shift things and move things. And we're going to give you some examples of that. But our position is we must be, as Christians and those of us that want to have anything from God, we must be mutable. That means we must be able to do what? Move. Come on. Am I right about it? You're right about it. And if we start thinking about church people, and can I talk about church people for a moment? Oh, yeah. If I talk about church people, there are some church people that we know don't, that don't ever want to move. All right. All right. All right. All right. When we are in a position where we can't move and we won't move, a lot of times we miss our season, our next season that God wants to take us to, our next level, because we refuse to move. Right. How many people, how many of us, if we be honest tonight, could actually say, you know, Lord, I was, uh, the, I remember you were speaking to me, you told me to do this one thing, and I refused to do it, and I refused to move, and now I realize now that, 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 that because I, I did not move when you asked me to move, I made a mess of things. Is there anybody here tonight right. that can be honest tonight and say, you know, I missed my next season because I didn't move when you said to move? Come on. Amen. All right. Amen. About eight years ago, I got a call from, I was living in Savannah, I got a call from Pastor George Lee from over at um, the, Mighty the Mighty Fortress. I got a call from him, and he said, I need a minister of music. And I said, oh, man, I just accepted a position in Cincinnati. I, and and they, I just accepted a position in Cincinnati. And he said, wow, he said, man, I really, really need you. I really would, you know, can we, is there anything we can do? Can we talk numbers or whatever? I said, you know what, I, I've already committed myself to this. That we've already, we're already in preparation for me to move to Cincinnati, Ohio. And um, I said, I, I need to just go ahead on and, and fulfill that commitment. He said, all right, I understand. And he had prayer with me and hung up the phone. And the church from Cincinnati moved me out there and... As God would have it, most of y'all saw my son, he came in church Sunday, he's nine years old, his name is Devon, and uh, he came, you know, he, we, we, moved to, we moved out there to Cincinnati, and when I got there, they said, we're going to start you off at $45,000 a year, and I said, okay, well, I'll, I'll take it. Um, within three months, they said, you know what, we're going to uh, 
adjust your salary. We're not going to give you a raise. We're going to give you a salary adjustment. And they moved me from $45,000 to fifty-two-five. Oh, I wish I had somebody here. Within three months. Yeah, yeah. Full benefits. I'm going somewhere. I'm not trying to brag. I'm just going somewhere. And, you know, I thought it would be easier if I said, man, I really should take this job here. And I'm already here in Savannah. You know, I might as well go to the mighty, the mighty Fortress and get my praise on and run that music department. It'd just be so much easier. But God, there was a plan. And how many people know that God can see further? Oh, yeah. Come on now. Than we can see. There's some, there are things that God has in our lives. And, you know, if we be, if we be in a process in a place that, you know what, God, I'm not going to fight you on it. I'm going to trust you. On everything I said, I've heard our pastor say, I pray about everything. He said, I pray about everything. How many people know that you have to pray and you have to seek God for everything? Because again, he can see so much further down the road. So as, as God would have, I took this job and, and I was working and I noticed my son was having breathing problems and he was having these problems. He, he had problems breathing and, and he kept and talking and, and he would wheeze every time that, you know, and, and that he was talking and, and I said, you know, something's wrong with him. So we took him to the doctor and he had this birth defect. I wish I had somebody. He had this birth defect and this is how, I'm put, how God puts things together. He had this birth defect where his artery that the artery is supposed to go directly from the heart to the lungs. Amen. But this particular artery, it went from the heart, wrapped around his trachea twice, and then went to the lungs. I got I got and they said that we, uh, they said that he'll, uh, the, the older he gets, the more trouble that he will have breathing, Amen. the more trouble he's going to have talking, Amen. and he needs to have this surgery. And we took him to the Children's Hospital in Cincinnati, and I want to let you know, as God would have it, the world's top surgeon on arteries worked at that hospital. The same guy that operated on the Pope was available to operate on my son. Lord, I wish I had somebody. Hundreds of thousands of dollars. I would take a position over here. I would not have been able to afford, I wish I had somebody here. That kind of operation. And no matter where I was in the world, I would have had to fly the bond to Cincinnati. Oh, I wish I had somebody. And this, this, and once he's there, you know, you, you, you know, stay around McDonald's house for a little bit. It's not, you can't stay there forever. You know, they have their centers for parents and that'll help you out, and which is a blessing. But you got to be able to stay out there as a child men so you can watch the child. But thank God, I would not have been able to do that if I hadn't taken the job that often made us available to live right in the city with the world's top artery surgeon. Come on there. If I had obeyed the voice of the Lord, and move when God told me to move. Amen. My son's life could have been at stake. Amen. Amen. So they operated him. They, they, they severed that artery, took it from around his trachea, mm -hmm. and, and, and put that artery back together. And as you can see, he came and he was in church praising Amen. God, clapping his hands. Yes, and, come on now. Amen. And so we give God glory for that. Amen. So God knows what he's doing in terms of our season, in terms of us being obedient to him. And how many people know that once you disobey God and you've got a spanking from God, oh, yeah. you're like, I, I, there's nothing Amen. like it. And you say, you know what, I don't ever want to be in this place again. Amen. 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 All right, let me put it to a way where maybe you can understand. How many folks have gotten a beating in the natural when you were younger? Amen. And you say, you know what, whatever that was that I did to make my parents upset, I don't ever want to do that ever again because I don't want to go through that. All right. So there's seasons, and, and we pray, when you pray to God, he's going to answer you. When you say, Lord, take me to the next level, uh, sometimes we don't even know what that means. Amen. Well, I wish I had somebody. Amen. When we say, Lord, take me to the next level, sometimes um, we burden ourselves with so many things. We've got a $600 car note. We've got 
this, that, and the other. We have a, a mortgage that, that's this, and, and we can't breathe, but we don't have room. Uh, and how many people know that and since you prayed a prayer and said, God, I want to go up, sometimes you got to dig a foul, uh, got to go back down to the beginning and to, to dig a better foundation in order to come up properly. So that's, those, come on now, those of you that just because you think you pray, it's like, what well, I'm praying, and I ask you to elevate me, and I, it seems like I'm going down, and you're taking me the opposite direction. But how many people know that a lot of times God will take certain things away to give us more room? Come on now. I told the choir, I watched it, uh, on my way to choir rehearsal, this couple was getting their car repossessing my complex, and I, my heart went out. The kids, it had two younger kids, a son and a daughter, and the, the wife was pleading and said, please don't take the car, please don't take the car. And I wanted to get out and pray, but I said, you know, at the time, they're not going to want to hear anything. I said, well, I'll just pray, and then I'll, I'll mention the choir rehearsal, and we prayed for them, you know. But, you know, sometimes God wants to remove certain things in our lives. As I shared with the choir, Pastor, it was, it was a Sunday. I was minister of music in this church in Colorado, and I had this beautiful Lexus. And I was in the middle of service, I was, I was, I was in the middle of service, and I was three months behind, you know, that's when they started bothering you, what have you. And um, some deacons called me, and they said, Rep. Cherry, come outside, You're, uh, somebody just took your car. And I said, Lord, I already knew, you know. But I tried to act like I was surprised, y'all know. Not <laughs> <laughs> my car, Lord, you know. And uh, I went outside, and the guy was going down the street with, you know, had the Lexus tilted, it was, and, and it was gone, and I said, okay. Uh, as Deacon last, I said, Deacons, please don't tell the church, the folk in the church, I don't want anybody, you already know them, I don't want anybody to know that anybody did, they took my car. So, <clears throat> y'all know what happened with that. <laughs> they might as well call the church meeting because everybody knew. <laughs> but one of the hardest things I had to do in life, um, besides trying to find a ride home, is to come back into service and minister. Not knowing, car's gone, not knowing how I was going to make it, my, my car's gone, you know. Um, how many people would have went home? How many people say, you know, I'm done for the day, that, that's it, you know, I, I, I mostly, I can't, I can't, I can't take anymore, they're going to pay me, I'm, I'm already here, I'm, I'm, I'm going home. But I went back in and I ministered like I had never ministered before, and I want you to know that God made a way for me not only to get that lectures back, but to pay it off, I wish I had somebody here. Because I was faithful for the next move of God. Okay? All right? Fig tree. Jesus and his disciples were walking, and Jesus was hungry. I'm going to blow your mind with this, because you may have never looked at it like this before. Jesus was hungry, and the Bible says that he saw a fig tree from afar off. But it wasn't the season for figs. Okay, this is Jesus. This is the creator. And the Bible says it wasn't a season for figs. So if the creator knew that it wasn't, I'm just going to give it to you just the, just the way it looks. If it wasn't the season for figs, I don't know if that other one works. Okay. That it wasn't the season. Not working. Go ahead. That it wasn't the season for figs. That it wasn't the season for figs. Why would Jesus expect walk up to something if it wasn't doing what he created it to do? Why would he be surprised or why would he even walk up there to it expecting to get something to eat if it wasn't particularly the season for figs? What we've missed as a church is it wasn't the season for picking figs off the tree. So when Jesus came there, he expected there to be fruit on the tree. But for some reason, and the Bible never says it, there was nothing but leaves. Yeah. And so many times we have people in our lives that we've allowed to pick 
from us? To take from us? Do you have $20? Do you have $30? Can you co-sign for me? Can you do this for me? And when it's your time to minister, you have nothing. When it's your time, your season to minister, even, even, we let folk, just, you, how many of us have people in our lives, they just drain us emotionally. Amen. They just, Amen. every time you see their name on the call ID, Amen. they just, y'all, only three people raise their hand. But many of us have people in our lives that drain us emotionally, and the enemy has a way when somebody knocks on your door Amen. of your house, if they're not the police, you have an option whether you're going to open the door or not. Amen. They can talk whatever they want to talk to outside. They can holler, whatever. You just turn your TV up and, and just let them they can keep on. When somebody rings your phone, it's a request saying they want to talk to you. You have an option whether you're going to answer the phone or not. Amen. But when somebody sends you a text, that's an immediate intrusion of your spirit. It goes right in. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Think Amen. about it. Amen. Have you ever got a text that just rocked your world? You Amen. were, you weren't even, you were. I see the text interrupts whatever you're you're doing, Amen. whatever you got going on. A text will just it just cuts right through. Amen. Yeah. How many people? Some of y'all don't text, but how many people have got a text like that? It just. Amen. They can just say your bill is due. <laughs> and you ain't feeling it right now because you're trying to, you know, juggle stuff. But in terms of moving to the next season, I want to give you another example. Our dear brother Ernest. We love Ernest, don't we? Amen. Amen. One of the, the Sunday at the Friends and Family, Friends and Family, Friends and Family Day, the church was packed, but we didn't have a drummer. And I said, Brother Ernest, I want you to come to the drums for me. And I need two things from you. I need you to be able to keep time. Keep it simple, because you're not a drummer. And I need you to watch me. And y'all know churches, I'm telling the story, y'all already know what happened. <laughs> oh, yeah, neither one. He got on the set and he didn't keep the time, he was doing all kinds of stuff, and he wasn't watching me. So I finally had to, you know, you know, Devontae walked in, I said, well, thank the Lord. From heaven. Amen. Amen. You know, God hears me when I pray. Out of all the people in the whole wide world, God hears me. You know. So I asked him to, I asked him, I said, brother, thank you so much for your time. God bless you. We're going to let Devontae up the guns. There are times where God wants to elevate us. Amen. But in this new particular new season, God is saying, I want you to keep time, and I want you to watch me. Amen. And too many times, we get caught up in being in a new environment. Come on. And, and we're not looking at God. We're not looking at God. We're not seeking God. And, 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 and God has to bring us back. Oh, come on now. To the choir stand of life. Amen. The consequences of missing the next season. You've seen the, the flyer. That particular house was owned by this woman named Vera Koki. In 1961, her, she and her husband purchased this house for $20,000 as a summertime retreat, a place where they could go for the summer to sort of enjoy the family. A developer came by. Um, from Penthouse Magazine, they wanted to build a casino. And if you look at the picture that, that's on there, there's, you see this, the two, looks like parking decks. Um, they offered her money to, to buy her house because it was in the way. And she refused to sell it. She realized, she said, oh, I'm on a gold mine. I'm here right here on the strip here. I know I can probably get more money. I'm going to win. But she refused to sell her house. So what they did, if you look at the flyer there, they built around her. Now, I don't know about you, but if I lived in this house, I would be feeling kind of claustrophobic. Amen. Because there's stuff to the left, to the right. stuff on the right, and, and stuff above, above me. I, I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. But many of us are in situations where we will not move 
And God has to build around us. Amen. And we wonder why we're feeling kind of claustrophobic. We wonder why we can't sleep at night. We wonder why we don't have peace. Because God has built around us because we refuse to move when he wanted to.